गुड इवनिंग केदार सर गुड इवनिंग इज दैट सो दिस इज कौस्तुभ स्टूडेंट कॉर्डिनेटर फॉर दिस ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स ओके ग्रेट कौस्तुभ नाइस टू मीट यू यस सर सो वेलकम टू नीटी सर वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑफ नीटी विल विल स्टार्ट बाय 5 Okay, so, good. I just wanted to make sure that I'm uh, successfully logged in and all that. So I'll yes, sir, yes, go sir. and uh, quickly pick up a cup of tea and come back. No issues, sir. No issues. Bye, sir. Good morning, uh, Professor. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Where are, are you? Uh, how's the weather from? in Boston? Are you in Boston today? I'm uh, just outside Boston in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Oh, okay, Rhode Island. Nice. And where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Cary, North Carolina, Research Triangle Park. Oh, very nice, very nice. Much warmer than where you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Good, mo good evening, Professor de Tivari. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening and good morning to you, actually. And uh, thank you. Uh, hi, Kadar. How are you? Simonos Tivari. Very, very good, uh, Professor Tivari. Good evening. How are you? Uh, very fine, sir. Very fine. And thank you very much for joining us at Start Notice, actually, because we don't have. Uh, but the moment we got your profile immediately, we thought to invite you because this is a very important. No, this really works us. out and it's always an honor to be associated with NITI. And especially yes. uh, when I saw uh, Professor David Simchi Levy also here, I have uh, actually taken his lectures when I was at Wharton uh, as well. So oh, yes. uh, always a pleasure to be again seeing him and also always good to be. And today is a uh, Sunday and I was not traveling. So this worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Actually, uh, we, we have been uh, running several courses with Sir David and it is in the line. And uh, always we found that uh, his support to DT as well as to cover some of the emerging topics ne, has always been very much uh, widely taken over by the uh, participants, not only from DT but also from other institutions, correct? Yeah. <laughs> So, you are presently in uh, North Carolina, you are telling? Uh, yes, I uh, I am calling in from re uh, Research Triangle Park, which is in uh, near Raleigh Durham in North Carolina. Just let me check, uh, then again I come back. Actually. So, Kadar, um, have you been associated with NITI before? Yes. Uh, so, I uh, I originally come from India, from Mumbai. Uh, so, I actually did uh, my master's, first master's at NITI before uh, doing my another master's at Wharton. And that's where I took your lecture at Wharton. I see. So we, um, I'm sure you took classes with uh, my friends, Marshall Fisher, Maurice Cohen. Yes, Cohen, Fisher, also uh, Christ, uh, uh, Christian Twice. Christian Twice, Christian Gerard Twice. Kashan, maybe. Yes, and oh. uh, Professor Ziv Katlan. Ziv Katlan, of course, uh, <laughs> is a co patriot. We both come from the same country. Yes, and I think the one that I'm talking about is when I think you were, so I'm trying to remember which exactly was the part. But uh, I think there was a course that I took in operations at Wharton where uh, you probably were uh, a co co professor or someone like that. I'm trying to remember. Was it with Ziv Katlan or Cohen or some maybe? Uh, I, I think I we think all it was with Maurice Cohen, but it's a long oh, time Maurice ago. Cohen, yeah. And then I think we all, I think Maurice Cohen took all of us to Japan uh, yeah. to actually uh, we worked on the Nissan yes. assembly line there. Yes. So, Professor David, you will be happy to know that we have one of our friend, Professor Dinesh Kumar. Uh, he has joined this just now and he is a professor at uh, one of the very premier and renowned institutions, IIM Bangalore, actually. Oh, so, nice. 
So Dinesh, you can uh, unmute. Ah. Dinesh, unmute. Yeah, I'm done. Hi, hi, David. Hi, hi, Dinesh. Hi. Nice to Good meet to, you. Nice meet to meet you. Uh, I mean, we follow your books and papers and so on. So I work at IIM Bangalore. I'm part of the digital sciences area. And uh, so this is, uh, I also have a data center and analytics lab where we do a lot of AI ML stuff. Oh, very nice. Very yeah, nice. yeah. And very similar so to what we projects, do. Oh, yeah. So some of these projects are obviously in the supply chain area, a lot of challenges yes. uh, given the size of India. Yes. And, and 1.4 billion people. So it's yes. uh, the scale, scaling yes. up the problem is uh, huge. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so mm -mm. I'll probably discuss when I you know talk about the kind of work that we are doing at IIM Bangalore. Nice, very nice. Yeah. Nice so to meet you. Dinesh, 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 Dinesh has written a very good book actually that mm -hmm. is on the, in the domain of business analytics, the science of data driven decision making. Oh, very uh, nice. one of the very, very renowned books, sir, and almost all the business school here, they follow it, actually. Uh, very nice. And uh, he is very, uh, you know, deep friend of mine since last 20 years. And uh, we have been uh, jointly working on some, some, some topics, also case studies that I told you earlier. So Dinesh Ji is very much, you know, known for his uh, analytical uh, solutions. And also he runs a very good laboratory there and solve a lot of problems to the industry. So Kedarji is a very, uh, one of the pro prominent alum of our uh, Dinesh Ji. Okay. He's based in, yeah. So he's basically working in the very interesting firm called uh, Amerisource version, mm -hmm. uh, Fortune 10 company actually. So he's one of the alums of BT and uh, currently working as CIO of that particular company. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So, I think, sir, now we can uh, just uh, can, can start the formal function of inaugural uh, closing ceremony of the course. And I think Abhishek Choudhury will join, sir, somewhere late. So let him come at that time. Till then, we should start the process. Right. Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to the validatory ceremony of the Global Online Certification Course on Business Analytics from Data Insights and Decision Making 2023. On behalf of NITI, I would like to thank all the dignitaries, faculty, and course participants for gracing us with their presence on this occasion, as we completed a month-long journey of learning. Today, we have with us Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Abhishek Chaudhary, VP Corporate Affairs, HR and Company Secretary of NICDC Limited, and keynote speaker, Sri Kedar Mahadeshwar. Senior Vice President and Head of IT North America at Amerisource Version. We also have with us our reputed and well-renowned course instructor, Professor David Simchi Levy from MIT USA and Professor Manoj Kumar Tiwari, Director NITI. Today, analytics is an integral part of modern supply chain management. This course should provide you with the foundation you need to understand and apply these methods to drive supply chain value. We thank everyone for giving such an overwhelming response to this course and without further ado, I would now like to call upon Mr. Manthan Tyagi, student coordinator for the course, to give, to give a brief about our institute, the course, and its registration statistics. Hello, everyone. NITI was established in 1963 by the Government of India with the purpose of advancing transformative education and industry-inspired research, thus helping Indian businesses to make their presence felt globally. It has proven its excellence by continuously being featured among India's best B schools and was ranked ninth amongst the management schools in India by its National Institution Ranking Framework, that is NIRF in 2022. It is a leading institute of operations and supply chain management, and this is evident from the placement statistics of the batch. Neatly attracted 100 plus recruiters for its final placement, with average salary for the batch being 25 lakhs plus per annum. Thus, NITI has aligned its vision and activities in line with the current and future needs of Indian industries, making them globally influential. NITI has successfully completed seven versions of the Global Online Certification course with Professor David Simchilevi. The courses received an overwhelming response 
with close to 15,000 participants from eminent organizations like Essential Humans, Captain Fresh, Micron, ITC, TCS, Mahindra Group, and many more. Across the seven courses, we have trained more than 2,000 industry professionals and 10,000 plus students and faculty from prominent institutes. I would like to highlight the success of our previous courses, where we received an average rating of 4.4 .4 out of 5 for teaching style, course execution, and overall lecture experience. After the success of previous courses, NITI launched this course addressing the requirements of the industry in collaboration with Professor David C. Levy. Considering the emergence of the use of data analytics in industries globally. This was a 30 hour weekend only course with a prime focus on topics such as optimizing complex decisions, machine learning techniques, model selection, and integration of techniques, and data digital supply chain transformation. Our course instructor, Professor David C. Levy is the most renowned professor and thought leader in the field of analytics, operations, and supply chain management. He also serves as the editor-in-chief of a leading journal named Management Science. He is the recipient of prestigious Informs Impact Prize 2020 for his work on supply chain resilience, and recently has also been elected as a member of the National Academy of Engineering for contributions using optimiz optimization and stochastic modeling to enhance supply chain management and operations. Professor Manoj Tiwari, Director NITI, is a stalwart in the field of operations and STM domain. With over three, 340 publications in international journals, he is also the recipient of most influencer, influential researcher award in this domain. Recently, a testimony to his stupendous endeavors, the Indian Institution of Industrial Engineering, conferred upon him its highest recognition, the Lillian Gilbert Award, for the year 2021-2022, in the cognizance of his outstanding contribution to the industrial engineering profession in India. We have diverse participants ranging from eminent institutes like IITs, IIMs, SGMRT, TAPMI, B School, and industry professionals from companies like Micron, CIPLA, Captain Press, Essential, comments and many more. The uniqueness of this course stems from the features it has offered, such as the experience sharing session conducted by industry salvers from reputed organizations. We thank all of you for the insightful interactions with the participants and the panelists. We are, we are sure that your presentations captured our audience well and added value to them. We truly believe that all genuine learning comes from experience and we certainly hope that we did justice to our participants through this initiative. Thank you once again for your active participation in these sessions. Feedback, we believe, is one of the most valuable sources of learning there is. And this, uh, this course has received compelling feedback from the participants. As evident from the slide, 91.1% of the course participants are willing to attend future courses by NITI. Thanks to the esteemed faculty, a relentless effort from student coordinators, the course garnered an average rating of 4.4 of 5 across all the parameters. I would like to thank all the esteemed faculty <laughs> from NITI whose guidance has helped in the end to end execution of this course. I would also like to thank all the student coordinators from NITI for their continued efforts in making this course a grand success. Thank you, Manthan. Now I would like to call upon Professor Manoj Kumar Tiwari, Director of NITI, for the welcome address. Professor Tiwari is a higher academic grade professor from Industrial Engineering and System Management Group at IIT Kharagpur. Currently on line at NITI as director since 2019, his research interests have been supported by several industries along with national and international research funding agencies. He has also published more than 360 papers in reputed international journals and is also the recipient of most Influential Researcher Award in the domain of operations and supply chain management. Recently, Sir is also awarded with the prestigious David F. Baker Distinguished Research Award from the Institute of Industrial and System Engineers. He is also the first researcher based out of India to get this honor. It is because of his stellar vision and leadership that this course has been made possible. Director Sir, I kindly request you to share a few words. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 
to for introducing me i say that uh, uh, recently we have been blessed to have our deeper collaboration with professor david simsi levy who is a, one of the leading author thinker as well as uh, you know a statesman who deals with the many type of problems where uh, you know data driven modeling analysis as well as the not only supply chain but overall business context is involved so that has actually given uh, not only me but entire niti fraternity a new you know kind of uh, rope to join the clubs of those particular institutions as well as the emerging areas where uh, industry can take a lot of uh, advantage and they can get very good uh, problem solving field and platform so professor david uh, with uh, sub, uh, accepted our request and then uh, the particular course business analytics from data to insights and decision making this was conceived by him and that has been a very you know uh, meticulously designed course where Professor David has uh, considered many case studies from the Rulala, Gukran, B2, B2W, and also he has discussed many important concepts you know, that deals with the regression, logistic regression, classification, uh, nearest neighbor algorithms, as well as portfolio optimization, digital transformations, and also you know some of the concepts you know, which are very much essential to comprehend that uh, what are the different areas where it can be of more beneficial to the industry and current people who are uh, current participants who are attending this course they can get leverage over you know their friends by understanding deeply the different kind of uh, uh, applications areas methodologies that how how actually uh, you know with the given features of data how how they can model the problem and they can apply the tools of machine learning so with the help of uh, this kind of very comprehensive approach uh, i think uh, we have given one of some of our best performance and professor david uh, is very much uh, you know uh, happy to provide any kind of support to the participants so we have created a say, concept of supplementary material through which we are providing that participants the necessary uh, support system of other literature through which they can enrich their knowledge and also we are thankful to many of the very senior industry participants who have shared their valuable experience and made the whole course quite enriched from the practical point of view and we all appreciate all these things i am also thankful to some of our uh, guest speakers you know, who are here like say one of our senior alum mr kedar the mahadeshwar and he is uh, you know currently working as a cio of north america a very source for Jan, a fortune 10 company and uh, he has a very you know uh, deeper experience in the finance as well as you know the different and other areas of the information systems so he is one of the our keynote speaker and also my friend uh, and well known scholar in the domain of uh, analytics as well as the data science who is a full professor at IM Bangalore and uh, he's widely known for his analytical skills say professor yu dinesh kumar uh, he is also one of the keynote speaker here and uh, one chief guest whom we have invited is mr abhishek choudhary he may join at 5 30 because of some his commitment to the government so he is uh, holding a lot of uh, important positions in the government particularly implementing the pm gati shakti missions as well as nicdc uh, programs uli and so many other uh, next generation logistic systems which India is trying to uh, implement through the Ministry of Commerce and, and Trade. And that way, so we have a comprehensive panel uh, which is here to align themselves with the policies of the government as well as the current job market along with the skill set necessary required actually to uh, resolve the problems which are faced by the industry. So with this, once again, I'm thankful to all the speakers who are here, along with my deeper respect goes to Professor David and the team who is uh, arranging all this course here. So thank you again, Professor David, for coming and helping us to have this course. And we hope that many such course between you and NITI will continue uh, in days to come. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Thank you, Director, sir, for inspiring words. Now I invite Professor Davis Sinti Levy, our lead instructor of the course for the keynote session. He is a professor of business and supply chain analytics and a director of data science lab at MIT USA. Professor Simchi Levy founded Logic Tools, now a subsidiary of IBM, which provided software solutions and decision support systems to clients such as Caterpillar, ConAgra, and Kraft Foods, among others. He later co-founded OPS Rules and Analytics, which are now part of Accenture. Professor Deddy, uh, David had also been previously associated with NITI for eight global online certification courses in the domain of supply chain management and data analytics. The course were highly successful with over 15,000 participants from 20 plus countries. And we are honored to have this association with you, sir. Professor David Sanchilini, the stage is all yours. Thank you uh, so much. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our uh, dignitaries, um, faculty, uh, participant, but in particular, my colleague and my friend, uh, Professor Tivari, who uh, just recently received an amazing uh, recognition by the Institute of Industrial uh, Engineering for his research accomplishment. The timing of this class cannot be more uh, appropriate with the government of India emphasizing and focusing on making India a hub for manufacturing, for supply chain, for logistics. And the opportunity for a country like India today are enormous. Here is one statistic. If you look at the US and you measure US logistics cost as a percentage of the GDP, it is about 8%. On the other hand, if you look at a country like India and you measure India logistics cost as a percentage of India GDP, it's around 14%. So the opportunity here is to use supply chain strategies, logistics strategies, data and analytics to dramatically improve logistic and supply chain performance in, uh, in uh, India. And this is where you can see three areas where India can compete effectively. One is focusing on data and analytics to dramatically reduce cost. Remember the recent the statistics that I just mentioned. The second is using data and analytics to significantly improve resiliency. And the importance of resiliency have been clear since the beginning of the pandemic affecting companies in different countries and in different industries. Using data and analytics is probably the only way to allow us to achieve both objectives. One is cut cost, and the other one increase resiliency. And the last opportunity we have seen in the US, but it's across the board, the ability to use data and analytics to automate processes. And I'll tell you just, and I will summarize this just with one story. About 2016, I met with the CEO of a large fashion retailer who um, described to me his vision. His vision was to double the size of the company in about um, five years. He recognized that he cannot achieve that objective by multiplying the number of people. And so his question was, how can I use data and analytics to improve business and supply chain performance while automating processes? Five years later, with the type of capabilities that I described and we talked about and we learned in this class, the company was able to dramatically change is uh, business performance in the market, increasing margin by 30%, increasing market share dramatically and improving business performance. And so my hope is that this class will help the participant uh, transform some of the organizations they are working on 
and together will help a country like India be highly competitive in uh, logistics, supply chain, and new AI technology. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Professor David, for your insightful words. It is always an honor and enriching experience to hear from you. This course was an initiative to accelerate the adoption of the PM Gati Shakti scheme, a national master plan as conceived by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. This plan aims at making India a developed nation in the next 25 years by improving its logistical capability. It is essentially a digital platform that brings 16 union ministries together, including the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways for integrated planning, coordination and implementation of infrastructure connectivity, projects for comprehensive and inclusive socio-economic progress in different parts of the country. To further understand the vision and mission of PM Gati Shakti scheme, we have a small video. आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में जल को थल से थल को डब से मेहनत को बाजारों से बाजारों को व्यापारों से
Now I welcome Shri Kedar Mahadeshwar, sir. He is a senior IT executive who is known for his passion in embracing innovation, transparency, and accountability in driving growth. He is responsible for conceptualizing and implementing technological innovation for the $220 billion plus annual revenue in healthcare businesses. Kedar sir takes pride in creating customer centric technology teams on a global scale. He holds an MBA in finance from the Wharton School of Management, along with a master's in industrial management and bachelor of sciences in mechanical engineering from Mumbai, India. We are truly honored to have you here, sir. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is such a great honor and pleasure to be associated on this panel. Uh, I'm just checking, am I allowed to share my screen? Uh, I don't see that option uh, here. Yeah, you have been uh, given if... sharing option. Huh? Can just check. Let's check. You have been given. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I, for some reason on my screen, it is not showing up. Uh, but I, I think we should be, we should be good. Uh, Let's check okay. it again. Now I have it. Let's yes. check it again. Yep. Okay, great. Again, huh? Yes. Thank you so much. First, I want to uh, definitely congratulate uh, our dear Professor uh, uh, Monash Tiwari and the entire staff students and uh, the support staff of NITI. Uh, it is, uh, I hope everyone understands, having Professor uh, Dr. David Simchilewe on this panel and associated with NITI is such a pride moment for me personally when I saw this course and uh, uh, event because I have been a student of Dr. Uh, David Simchilewe at, when I was at Wharton and uh, he definitely, I'm, I'm not joking, he definitely was one of the most impactful uh, persons in my academic uh, career at Wharton. And I really enjoyed and I still feel that I apply a lot of the lessons that I learned in those kind of discussions, more than just the courses, the discussions that used to happen at the coffee center or the hallways. Uh, at the same time, I'm a very proud NITI alumni as well. Uh, I'm a, a student of NITI. I graduated in 1997. Uh, and I'm uh, always looking forward to contribute uh, in whatever shape and form that I can to a noble work that uh, Professor Dr. Tiwari and all of you are doing. Uh, so very quickly, uh, next nine minutes or so, I'm trying to tell you a little bit about what we do. So just as a use case of analytics in supply chain uh, in my company, uh, but at the same time, I'll also try to uh, share my experience uh, that where does the actual challenge lie in the industry when I try to apply uh, these kind of uh, lessons. Uh, I'm assuming that you guys can see my screen and uh, this is a picture uh, of our uh, what we call it as Dabawala and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, people who are not from India they also hopefully are aware of this lunchbox carriers case study of our Mumbai supply chain that's where i really i really feel that that's the role model supply chain that i've always learned the lessons from uh, so how can this supply chain be six sigma and i still struggle to get that kind of accuracy and resiliency uh, in my supply chain for a 240 billion dollar uh, healthcare drug distribution supply chain company here and this supply chain by the way uh, in mumbai hardly uses any technology. So my first lesson is technology is not really the only uh, uh, root cause uh, of or the driving factor of getting that kind of success. It's a, it's a holistic approach that we what we need. And you all with your background, I want to congratulate each one of your the students who have taken a step of taking a course like business analytics. Uh, it is it, this kind of steps and the initiatives that you take in your life are going to be super helpful for you, but more importantly, not just for your company, but the end customers that you guys are serving. Uh, so in my case, uh, the uh, the supply chain that I'm talking about serves, as we said, $240 billion, uh, and 90% of that is in North America. So my, my background of business transformation and usage of technology, huge amount of that actually goes into analytics whether it is uh, deterministic or predictive or prescriptive, depending on the situation and uh, priorities, the business priorities. So I want to highlight that 
by using the technology and math or computational sciences in theory you can solve each and every problem in the industry where me and my colleagues we start struggling is how to prioritize okay so where if i have a 5 million dollar budget for a project or a 10 million dollar budget for a project we spend lot of time in understanding what is the right use of each and every dollar to make impact on the patients in our case human patients and animal health patients so just to give you the background my company we uh, buy about 600 650 million dollars worth of medicines every day and within 24 hours we sell about 20, 90% of them every day so we have to have supply chain systems that support the entire distribution network constantly dependent on all the warehousing systems erp systems transportation systems e-commerce systems crm systems and end to end as again i uh, you must have studied this from uh, professors uh, wherever it's it's less important to just design the system it's more important to get the confidence that if any one small blip happens anywhere in the supply chain how quickly you can respond how quickly you can take the decisions to make not just the incremental profit for the company but in our case actually saves real human lives or animal lives so it, it's such a great uh, honor to be uh, uh, involved in this kind of thing um on this slide and these are actual real pictures of my warehouses uh, here in the us so we have about 56 distribution centers we spend a lot of time in understanding that should we add couple of them or should we in fact subtract couple of them it takes a lot of analysis and then uh, we have to really engage uh, management thought leaders professors academicians and a lot of analytical minds like you so we have invested about 800 million dollars in last 10 years to enhance the quality and efficiency of our supply chain over this 5.6 million kind of a warehouse or dc uh, space that we have uh, here in the us and puerto rico and it's not an easy uh, task by any means but at the same time uh, just in the just in the spirit of what you guys are doing today you guys are uh first of all congratulations that i heard that today is going to be uh uh the uh last lecture or kind of uh, closing ceremony for a fantastic uh course that you all have taken so while wishing you the good success for your future um one message i have is it's not only the math and computational power that will save this world or your company your business is going on day to day even today so if you want to really make a change and really want to use that data for decision making do not wait for a disaster to happen in the supply chain in your company you need to do these things proactively which means you need to be the change maker change maker for making this happen so you need to wear the hat of convincing your management or your customers or your stakeholders of why this is important so do not focus only on the how part focus a lot on the why part to bring the real value to your end customers because this is such a powerful tool to use it but only if it is used wisely correctly smartly intelligently uh, and then then the whole world and the economy and the industry is going to get the benefits of it you cannot do it alone it has to be a teamwork so whether you are from supply chain department or marketing or production or manufacturing or call centers it doesn't matter all of you together can make those changes if you think that i have done this course now i am the expert in statistics and i am going to do this change these kind of changes do not happen individually this is a team sport and please remember that because that's something which i still feel that is a huge opportunity for all of us to bring that change in the industry so with that um, i think i'm about to end my 10 minutes so i'm going to give it back uh, to professor tiwari and the team to take it over thank you uh, thank you sir
Now I welcome Professor Yu Dinesh Kumarji, Professor in Decision Sciences, Chairperson, Data Center and Analytics Lab at IM Bangalore. He is known for his research contribution in the area of business analytics and big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning algorithm. He has published several research articles in reputable academic journals such as EJOR, IJPE, the Journal of Operation Research Society, Computers and Operation Research, and many more. He has published more than 30 case studies on business analytics and machine learning algorithms based on India and multilateral organi organizations such as Avin Milk Dairy, Akshya Patra Foundation, Apollo Hospitals, Big Basket, Flipkart.com, and so on. He has also authored a book titled Business Analytics, the Science of Data Driven and Decision Making, published by Wiley in 2017. Professor Yudhinesh Kumar, the stage is all yours. Thank you. I hope everybody can hear me. Yeah, Dinesh, yes. go ahead. Okay. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here among the great academicians and uh, researchers and participants. So what I'm going to uh, talk about is my own experience of uh, using AI and ML, uh, especially how Indian companies are using, right? So my view is that uh, when we talk about these emerging technologies, uh, we need to look at what kind of impact they are making. It could be sometimes simple financial impact, you make more money, or probably also you uh, make an impact to the society, uh, make everybody else's life easier. So I'm going to talk about two uh, case studies that I worked on, and both of them use some kind of innovation. So in my view, when we uh, talk about uh, AI and ML, uh, how innovatively you're using uh, you know, to solve problems. So that matters a lot. And can you scale it up to say, the demands of Amazons and Googles and so on, right? So one problem that we solve for, is for Big Basket. Uh, many of you know that it's a online grocery store, which is owned by Tata's now. And they, uh, you know, a few years back, they asked this interesting question. Can you predict uh, uh, whether a customer has forgotten something or not? In fact, Today, if you actually you know, uh, use their uh, portal, online portal to buy anything, and if you start adding items to the cart, it will start predicting things that uh, you probably have forgotten, right? Now, and it will ask, the portal will ask you a question, did you forget these items? And then they list few items. Now, why is this important for, uh, say, uh, online grocery uh, store? Uh, forgetfulness when it comes to grocery purchase is very, very common. So about 60% of us uh, forget, that's what the statistics say, 60% of us forget at least one or two items when it comes to grocery purchase. Now look at the financial impact of this. Uh, probably, let us say, uh, given the size of India, say 1 million transactions per week, and we are talking about 52 million transactions per week, right? And uh, say the forgotten item is about 500 rupees worth. And if you put all the numbers together, we'll get that as more than 1500 crores. That's the kind of revenue that we are talking about. And the question is, can um, analytics or AI or ML, whatever you want to call, can uh, help to solve this problem? Can you predict what uh, items the customer probably has forgotten? So, uh, when you try to do this, you'll find that there are a lot of challenges. The first thing is when we were looking at this, there were 18,000 SKUs, right? And when you want to predict at what level you want to predict, do you want to make this prediction at an SKU level or a brand level or a category level? For example, I can ask, did you forget 200 ml Diet Coke, right? Or did you forget Coke or did you forget soft drink? Now, all these decisions have an impact because they uh, decide how uh, complex the problem is going to be, and uh, it has a serious impact on the scalability of the algorithm that we are going to use. And the other challenge uh, which, you, uh, which we face is that India is a very, very different kind of market. So for example, we have vegetarians and non-vegetarians, right? So by looking at the past transactions, you can figure out whether somebody is vegetarian or non-vegetarian. But that's not that simple because Many non vegetarian in India suddenly become vegetarian for a month or a for a week or for a day. Now, how do I figure this out? Uh, this person is actually non vegetarian, but then uh, during the month of April, he decides to be a vegetarian, right? And this changes with every community. And given 
the multicultural society that we have, it becomes even a you know a greater problem. Now you try to come up with any kind of solution, you find a lot of other problems because when we talk about uh, grocery purchase, they're all seasonal products, right? Uh, fruits come during certain season, and similarly, there are a lot of uh, deals that are given to the customers based on festivals and so on. So you'll find a lot of new SKUs created during uh, festival season like Diwali and all, and after that, you may not have that SKU, but then that SKU is created in the uh, ERP system. Now, let me give you an example. Let us take mango. If a customer is purchasing mango regularly, and my algorithm will say that, okay, this customer has a huge affinity towards mango. And say the customer starts adding and the customer has not added mango, your algorithm will say, okay, probably the customer did not add mango. Why can't I recommend that? Why can't I ask, did you forget mango? And obviously the customer will get excited and then going to check that box. But then say, if it is January, you don't have mango in the market. And you cannot now send a message to the customer, sorry, we also forgot to buy mango, right? So basically what I'm saying is, all these are real-time decisions. So how does your algorithm uh, enable you to create a real-time solution? And given the scale of operations and the number of SKUs you have and so on. But what we did, we actually used Google's page ranking algorithm, right? So if you look at Google's page ranking algorithm, you have a search word, you enter a search word in Google, and it identifies all the matching sites, but then when it displays, it displays the one which is most relevant at the top and the second most relevant and so on, right? So it ranks those websites before it displays. So what we did, we actually uh, used Google's page ranking algorithm to rank items or SKUs which are you know, important for a particular customer. Now, the question is, if you have 50 million customers, are you going to do uh, run this algorithm 50 million times? Right now, in a way you do it, but then how do you do it? That's the you know uh, surprise part because you're not probably solving this uh, this as a real time problem. You're solving this as a planning problem. So when a customer enters, you know what that customer's priority list is, right? So this is one of the famous case studies which is used across the world today. It is published at the Harvard Business Publishing because of the innovation that. Uh, we demonstrated in creating this solution to uh, this particular uh, company, uh, Big Basket. The next example that I'm going to talk about is coming from uh, healthcare. Uh, Kedar talked about uh, healthcare applications. So in India, a uh, large number of uh, uh, citizens do not have quality healthcare, access to quality healthcare system. A uh, lot of villages do not have primary healthcare centers, and this can run. Uh, into several states, and probably there are thousands and thousands of villages where, are, where there is no uh, primary health care center. So most of these villages are served by uh, somebody called Asha worker, and this is, a, this is created by, this system is created by uh, Department of Health to assist uh, mom and uh, baby uh, with their needs. So these are basically, uh, most of them are, you know, uh, 10th grade pass, they are trained so that they can help mom and baby with their need. Now, one of the problem India faces is something uh, called sepsis, neonatal sepsis. So sepsis is a, a bacterial infection and it can lead to multiple organ uh, failure and babies can die. Even if, if it happens in case of adults, the, it's, the mortality rate is very high. And in India, the mortal rate when we were looking at this data was about 25. It's one of the worst in the world, right? And a lot of children uh, die when they were being transported from their residence to hospital, okay? Now the thing is, the challenge is, okay, you, if you want to develop a model, you have to develop a model uh, without using non-invasive diagnostics or non-invasive parameters because um, many of these villages will not have diagnostic center. You cannot do a... A blood culture test to figure out whether the baby has a sepsis or not, and it is almost impossible in many villages. So what we did, we used AI and ML to actually create a model which uses non-invasive parameters, look at mother's parameters and baby's parameters, and predict whether the baby has sepsis or not. And you can you know, have a simple app which Asha worker can use, and she can take a decision, right decision, so that 
the baby can be transferred to the right kind of hospital on time and you can save the life of the baby, right? So what I'm trying to say is that in India, there are a large number of challenging problems. In, in fact, if you look at the research problems because of the scale, because of the uh, diversity that we have, this is a, in a hotbed for any research that you want to do, right? And uh, luckily we have now tools like AI and ML can be very, very effective. Uh, data science can be very, very effective uh, for solving large number of two, uh, sorry, large number of problems that we encounter in India as a country. So with that, I'll uh, stop. It's uh, yeah, exactly 10 minutes, I guess. Uh, over to you, Manojji. Thank you, Dizzy. Um, uh, my dear friends, here now our uh, chief guest of today's function, Mr. Abhishek Choudhury ji has joined. And uh, as promised, you know, and I, I want to brief you that uh, Abhishek ji, uh, Abhishek ji, can you open your Yeah, now he came on the video. So Mr. Abhishek Choudhury is, you know, well known uh, now with the help of uh, to the government, particularly on implementing the some of the very famous vision and projects of the government of India, particularly one which uh, I know is PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan, and also the ULIP, one of the very powerful softwares which is government of India is going to release for linking with the different uh, stakeholders. And also he is connected with the national industrial corridor projects and also monitoring many of the progress of the economic corridors. So very important uh, person connected with the different schemes of our honorable prime minister. And fortunately we are lucky enough that he has been introduced to us by none other than our uh, Honorable Secretary uh, of Education, Sri K. Sanjay Murthy ji. So before uh, going for your formal introduction of Sheikh ji, I request my student coordinator to uh, have your citation and then we can uh, have your uh, talk on the series. Okay, that's all. Thank you. I welcome Sri Abhishek Chaudhary ji. He has over 20 years of experience in working with straight title government across levels on policy formulations framing implementation, implementation strategies, project marketing and driving project implementations. He has been associated with the prestigious National Industrial Corridor Project since its inception and had been leading the corporate affairs, strategy, legal and secretarial functions and also heading HR and many, uh, marketing activity. He is also nominated as a board member by Government of India for various companies. Thank you, sir. It's always a, uh, it's our privilege to have you with us today. Abhishek before you just uh, join your presentation, I would, I would like to introduce you. We have a Professor David Simchi Devi, uh, one of the very renowned professor of the MIT, as you can see. And also one of, uh, I know we have actually run this program under the PM Gati Shakti banner in order to give an idea that how the data insights can be used to proper decision making, which is kindly required by different, uh, you know, operations, which you are also having in your mind. And also we have one of our uh, alums and a very senior officer, uh, CIO in the North American uh, Ameri Source Bergen Company, Fortune 10 firm, uh, Mr. Kedar J. Mahadeshwar. And also, you know, one of the leading academicians who is having a lot of say in the data science from IM Bangalore, uh, Professor Y. Dinesh Kumar. So this is our panel, sir. And now we request you to have your talk on the topic that you mentioned, particularly on this issue. Thank you very much, Rajesh. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for the warm introduction. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you all to celebrate this very important event. And let me tell you that uh, because uh, Murthy sir just mentioned me to participate in this program, I'm just on my way back from Srinagar, just uh, landed in time mm -hmm. so that I'm able to attend this program. And in Srinagar, we had just concluded the third regional workshop involving four states and three union territories. It was a two-day program, so I just landed at my place. So in the first place, I wholeheartedly appreciate the initiatives taken by NITI to provide global online certification courses. I also want to thank Professor Devitt, Director of Data Sciences Lab at MIT USA, Professor Manoj Tiwari, Director at NITI Mumbai, and the entire organizing team for initiating such an amazing effort to upskill all participants in business analytics from data to insights and decision making 2023. With India at the cusp of transformation, we have taken one more step forward by taking over the leadership of the prestigious G20 group by focusing 
on the motto of Vasudev Kutumkam. Along with these major strides in the manufacturing sector to become a potential hub, a simultaneous focus on improving connectivity across the country has been taken. To accelerate this transformation, our Honorable Prime Minister has launched PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan for Multimodal Connectivity on 13th October 2021. It brings together the different layers of infrastructure as well as the ministries involved in the development of economic zones into one platform which is completely based on GIS-based technology. Bizek N, which is Bhaskacharya Institute of Space, based out of Ahmedabad, they are the ones who have developed this whole uh, GIS-based system and is managing that. I am very happy to share that in the very short span of around 18 months since the launch, around 1300 data layers have actually been mapped onto the PM Gati Shakti portal as of now, which includes the entire road network of the country, including the road networks like national highway, state highways, then we have expressways, then the border roads, then the roads constructed by the state PWD, the entire country's railway network, the entire country renewable energy network, the transmission lines, the telecom network, the optic fiber connectivity going all down to the Andaman, Nicobar, Nakshati, Island, etc. So the entire infrastructure mapping has been done. In on, on the top of it, what we have mapped is the industrial areas and the spatial economic zones and wherever any kind of economic activity is happening, whether it is a food park or an ESDM cluster or a textile park and so on and so forth. Recently, we are extended this scheme of PM Gati Shakti to include the social sector also, which includes the location of the schools, the location of Anganwadis, the location of colleges, institutions, hospitals, etc., etc. So what PM Gati Shakti is now doing is, it is helping in the conceptualization of the project, in the site selection of the project, in development of the project, is helping in the land acquisition, it is helping in route optimization, it helps in reducing the overall cost of building infrastructure in the country, and also for the purpose of implementing the infrastructure in a very, very timely manner. The whole approach of PM Gati Shakti is to have a whole of government approach. Earlier, different government departments used to work in silos. Now with PM Gati Shakti, right from the level of planning till the level of implementations, all departments are sitting together and working at the DPR stage itself which means there is a cohesiveness, there is a synchronization, there is a comprehensiveness, and in the integration of the efforts of different ministries working together. Just a very classic case of example uh, to demonstrate, we have already seen in our lives, one department construct the roads, the other department comes and dig it for laying a water pipeline or laying an optic fiber network. That is only because there is a lack of coordination between the two departments. So this all in future, will definitely get resolved with the using of PM Gati Shakti. And I'm very happy that states are using PM Gati Shakti at the grassroots level in a very, very big way. Another initiative which the government of India has done is under the PM Gati Shakti umbrella, there are two different silos. One is the national master plan. The second is the national logistic policy. The national logistic policy also was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister on 17 September 2022. And as part of national logistic policy, we have developed unified logistics interface platform, whereby at the back end, we have integrated different systems of various ministries through an API linkage. So just to give you an example, within Ministry of Civil Aviation, there are three different systems which are operating as of now. Delhi Airport, Hyderabad Airport is run on a different system. Mumbai Airport, Bangalore Airport runs on second system. 26 airports owned, operated, managed by Airport Authority of India runs on a three third system. And all these three systems at the back end don't talk to each other. Similarly, railways has their own logistic system, which is called FOIS, Freight Operation Information System. Ministry of Road Transport has three systems, which is Wahan to verify the credentials of the vehicle, Sarthi to verify the credentials of the driver, and the FASTEC, which is the electronic toll collection system, which we all know. Similarly, DGFT grants importer exporter code. Then we have a system called IceGate, which is runs by Department of Customs. Then we have GST and eWay bill. 
and similarly so and so forth there are more than 30 systems which are directly or indirectly contributing to the logistics space of the country or managing transacting verifying the logistic uh, transactions in the country so what we have done under ulip is we have integrated close to 33 systems of seven different ministries we're covering around 1600 odd fields by way of developing more than 105 apis and this number will keep on growing as we move ahead because it's a completely dynamic process just to give you a brief about uh, ulip it's been developed on the lines of the upi system what has been done under the digital payments route that government has created the base layer similarly we have created the upi of the logistic space and are now promoting the private sector companies to leverage this data layer for the benefit of the stakeholders within the value chain i'm very happy to share that since a very small time has spent uh, since 17 september 2022 in this short period of time more than 400 companies are already registered on the ULIP platform. We have identified close to 250 use cases. Already 30 apps has been created by the private sector by leveraging the ULIP API. And there are many more apps which are in the process of being developed right now. So ULIP actually will become the UPI of the logistics sector in the years to come. And every transaction of the logistic will either get verified, authenticated, tracked, traced, using the ULIP API. So this has been done for the purpose of providing ease of doing business and also for the purpose of ensuring an informed decision making for an exporter or an importer. So for example, if I have to book a flight from Delhi to Mumbai, I should be in a position to understand the performance of a port operator. I should be in a position to understand the performance of a CFS, a ICD, or any other freight forwarder to that matter. ULIP has been uh, developed by leveraging the existing logistic data bank project, which we are running since 2016, under which we were made responsible for tracking and tracing the movement of exim containers in the country. In six years of our operations, we have uh, uh, tracked close to 56 million containers and by installing more than 2,600 RFID readers at different toll plazas. I'm very happy to share that as of now, every single exam container of the country is being tracked by us there is no single container which can leave the port boundary without having a rfid tag so this is basically to uh, summarize that digitally what government is doing so as to integrate the different system so as to provide a better information to the end user for taking a informed decision we aim at bringing this visibility and transparency to the logistic environment streamlining the operations across the supply chain and help in the government's plan of improving this ease of doing business. More and more business functions are trying to better understand how their decisions and the budget affect the business at large, predict customer behavior, optimize marketing strategies, uh, track customer loyalty, loyalty programs, etc., and improve the customer service at the end. Moreover, analytics can also be used for forecasting the future market trends, identify potential opportunities and evaluate the success of current strategies for organization as a whole. Niti Mumbai being a major stakeholder in promoting this initiative as the nodal hub for capacity building in the logistic and supply chain management under the Ministry of Education has played a very vital role to my mind in upscaling the professionals and the students alike through its global online certification courses. After going through the course website, I got to know that throughout all eight editions of uh, life, uh, more than 13,000 individuals have been positively impacted uh, from the different walks of life. Moreover, Professor David's lecture combined with experience sharing session from the industry leaders, according to me, happened to be the perfect convocation of theoretical as well as the practical knowledge helping students in getting an idea about industry practices and simultaneously exposing professionals to implement new ideas in their respective organizations. Once again, I would like to congratulate the entire organizing team on the successful fulfillment of yet another course. And I will request uh, Professor Tiwari that whenever I am in Mumbai next, I will definitely love to meet all of you in person and also to address the students. Thank you so very much. So th thank you, Shekji. Really, we wanted to see you physically here, but unfortunately, you, you were in Jammu Kashmir now. 
you have reached here, so we again extend our invitation to you and hope that you will get benefit of your presence in many ways, particularly in helping you to implement the Gati Shakti, PM Gati Shakti as well as National Logistic Policy. So thank you very much again for accepting our invitation and being with us. So now to a student coordinator, please. Thank you for sharing your expertise, sir. I thank all our chief guests and keynote speakers for such, in, such inspiring and encouraging words. We at NITI will continue to add more value to businesses and help them make their presence felt globally. Now I invite our faculty coordinator for the vote of thanks, Professor Jasashri, ma'am. Thank you much. As we reach towards the end of the closing ceremony, I take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has made the successful completion of this unique course possible. Firstly, I would like to thank Professor David Sinchidevi for kindly accepting our invitation to lead this course after completing seven global online certification courses with us. We are sure that our participants have gathered a lot of learning from his unique teaching style with diverse case studies and practical examples. Thank you, Professor David, for your association with us. We feel privileged for having you with us. We are sincerely thankful to our honorable chief guest, Sri Abhishek Chaudhuryji, for gracing the event with his presence and illuminating us with his wise counsel. We thank you, sir, for giving a perfect end to this course. We extend our gratitude to Sri Kedar J. Mahadeshwar Ji for enlightening us with his valuable words. We are really thankful to you, sir, for joining us despite the odd timing. We would like to express our deepest appreciation to Professor U. Dinesh Kumar Ji for gracing today's event. Sir, we are highly grateful to have you with us and to hear your insightful words. Most importantly, we are extremely thankful to all the course participants for showing an overwhelming response to this course and believing in the brand of NITI as one of the premier institutes in the country. We look forward to engaging with you all in our future courses. As always, it is a matter of pride for us that this course has been launched and successfully managed by the NITI team we are incredibly grateful to our director, sir, Professor Manoj Kumar Tiwari, under whose visionary leadership and guidance, the launch of this course has been possible again. We also thank the institute authority, faculty members, officers, and staff members for having mobilized all the resources needed for this program. We are also grateful to the entire NITI community, including the NITI faculty and students for their continued encouragement and support. We really appreciate our faculty coordinators, Professor Rofin TM and Professor Maheshwar Singha Mahapatra for their excellent management of the course. We especially thank our student team led by Akash, Kosta, Sadam, Harsh, Mantan, and Ishika who are handling the end-to-end -end execution of the entire course. We also thank the research scholars, Rani and Pooja, for their continued support and engagement. We feel immensely proud of your entire team and we aim to continue to add value to this course and all future courses for our participants. A big thank you to all for attending the closing ceremony and we are looking forward to your presence in the future courses. Over to Harsh. Thank you, ma'am. Before ending the session, I request everyone to turn on their cameras for a photograph. Thank you very much, uh, Abhishek Ji, Dinesh, and uh, Kedar so for coming to this course. And we are really, from NITI and from entire fraternity, we are thankful to you uh, so for uh, attending this particular ceremony. And uh, once again, now we, we express our 
deepest regards to all of you. And now I think over to the uh, student coordinator for running the remaining one and one and a half hour lectures of Professor David to all the participants. Thank you, sir, for coming to Alam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we'll take just five minute break, sir, and again we start with the course. Thank you, Dinesh Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, dear participants, we will have a break of five minutes, and I request all of the participants to join back for the final lecture with Professor Devesan Chidari, sir. Thank you, everyone. 